on? Welcome back to the channel. It's the King Koopa. Thank you for stopping by today. We are going to be doing a big brake conversion on my 04 Silverado for the front end. These brakes, calipers, pads, and rotors are from a 2019-2020 Silverado going on a new body style. That is the 03-06 GMC and Chevy Silverado. I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. These things look sick and they are massive. That is converting a two-piston caliper into a four-piston caliper and that is a non-floating, so it grips it from both sides, and uh, I actually like it a lot. These things are pretty cool. In this video, I will be showing you everything I did step-by-step step to uh, convert these over. It really wasn't that hard, pretty straightforward, and I will be putting in the description below the part numbers for all the items that I bought. So make sure you watch to the end, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as best as possible. And for all the people that answered me on my last video, thank you so much. Um, I have decided that we are going to be swapping the bottom end for the 4.8 out to a LQ960 block. So uh, that's going to be converting from a 293 cubic inch to a 366. So uh, more power, baby. And for the quadra steer bed, I think we have found a black one. It's like 1400 bucks, but it's like four hours away. Um, it's snowing quite a bit out now. So we are going to be waiting a little bit for that. And once we pick that up, we're just going to be running wheel spacers for now. And eventually we will bite in the rear wheels. But anyway, let's get to the brake conversions. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. So uh, let's get started. All right, and right now we are about to pop our true spike spikes off. These things are pretty sweet. I actually like them a lot. Got the little black ones. Got some sleeve covers. I actually have a video of these installed if you guys are interested. Now before you go out and buy all the parts for this modification, I'd like for you to go out in the garage, get your micrometers out, and do a quick measurement to give you a rough idea if your wheels are going to clear the calipers. These are very large calipers, and some wheel designs are not going to clear. So you might have to run a 3mm wheel spacer or maybe even a 5mm wheel spacer just to get by. You don't really want to notch the back of your wheels, or some people might grind down the calipers, but uh, doesn't look the best in my opinion. So I'm going to give you some measurements to help you out the best that I can. We are going to be measuring the closest part of the caliper to the wheel, which is the front corner. I do not know which wheels will and will not fit. I just know that mine clear by 0 .064 inches without a wheel spacer. It really all comes down to your wheel design and the offset does have a little bit of play in there as well. And measuring our old brake setup from the surface of this rotor to the top corner of the caliper bracket comes out to about 40.38 millimeters. The new calipers measure 57 millimeters. And again, measuring from this inside corner closest to the wheel. And we are measuring on the surface of the rotor on this inside corner where the pads do not touch. If you measure from this surface, like I was pointing at earlier, a worn down rotor could change the dimensions of your measurements. Now that we have all of our measurements, knowing that the newer calipers have 57 millimeters off this surface, take your micrometers to 17 millimeters lock it in place, which is the difference between our two calipers. Set that right here. So theoretically, this point right here is about how far out the new caliper will stick. So now we're going to slide our new rim on and measure this again and check it. Here's our measurement and now is when I would spin the rim to show you that it just barely clears. But I can't actually show you that it clears because that caliper ceased. But you get the point. I gave you the measurements. You find the offset of what the old caliper is to the new caliper. You take your micrometers, measure it, and then you can slowly spin your rim to see and give you a somewhat of an idea if it will clear or not. I cannot guarantee you that your rim will clear. All rims are made differently, designed differently. So here's the key part for this install. You will need a 1 8 inch stainless steel washer, which acts as a spacer to fit on here. So that actually slides in between the caliper and your spindle. So we're going to slide the same bolt in the back. That'll sit right there. And that is going to space your caliper 1 8 inch 
out and that's going to center it directly on the rotor. slide our caliper in there. Now those two bolts are going to get torqued to 129 foot-pounds. Now we can remove our little shipping plug and we're going to reinsert our banjo fitting. Make sure you have your brass washers on both sides to make a nice sealed junction. Now we can torque our brake line bolt to 30 foot-pounds. There we go. Here's the brake line in the factory locations. It is actually a little tight, not anymore, but I did have to grab from this side, wiggle a brake line a little bit, and stuff the hose just a little bit through this bracket, maybe only about a half an inch, just to give this side a little bit more slack because it is super tight. And you always want to do a full rotation check of your spindle to make sure you're not pinching um, or stretching your ABS line or your brake lines. Now that we have both calipers torqued and we have the brake line torqued, it is now time to install our brake pads. We got our brake pads from PowerStop. They are definitely a cheaper option than going straight through the dealer. I currently have PowerStop brakes on the white truck right now and they work great, especially with that thing being 9,000 pounds. One thing to note when you do place your order for your pads and your calipers, your calipers are going to come with these guide pins and a little spring tab on there. The brake pads are actually just going to come with the pads themselves. I feel like normally these come with the extra metal tabs and all that extra options and stuff. But these things are actually pretty heavy duty. They're super beefy. I like them a lot. And actually I already finished the other side before I filmed this right now. These are honestly probably the easiest brake pad install I have ever done. It's actually really easy so I'm actually really excited for these. There we go. First thing, we're going to slide our brake pads in. There is no left or right. These all have this exact same part number. There's the first one. There is the second one. Now we're going to open our little bag. This bag is going to contain your spring tab, two guide pins, and two little bent cotter keys. We're going to start at the top, through this guide hole, run it through there, through the pad, through the next pad and through the last hole. After we do that, we're going to take our little pre-bent cotter key and run around there to lock it in place. Next, we're going to take our metal tab. These little bent prongs are going to go up, so we're going to force this closed. And then it's going to set on top of that first bar, just like that. And that little metal tabs are going to lock into the brake pads. We will send our bottom guide pin through. Put the cotter key on that side. And now we're going to pinch these middle tabs, stuff it down, and then shove that onto the guide pin. There it's finished, it's fully installed. And the reason I like this is because check this out. Look how quick those things spring back. Super easy. All right, so we are now in the home stretch. Both calipers on, the pads are in, the guide pins, cotter keys, everything's torqued, and now it is everybody's favorite part of a brake job, and that is bleeding the brakes. And while you are bleeding the brakes, you wanna make sure that no air goes into the reservoir at all, meaning the fluid stays full almost the entire time. This does not require two people, but it's extremely helpful to have two people. So I'm gonna have some help from my lovely assistant, Juliet. She's gonna be inside the cab, pressing the brake, letting me know when she's pressing, when she's letting go, and I'm going to be at each caliper, cracking the bleeder screw loose, letting the air out, and as soon as the air stops flowing, I'm going to shut it off. She's going to release the pedal and then push back into it again, and that's when I'm going to crack it open. Make sure that you do not release the pedal with the bleeder screw still open so that it doesn't suck any air back into it. Getting all the air out of the brake lines is going to keep it from being spongy. We're going to start at the back right caliper, farthest away from the brake reservoir, Bleed that one, go to the driver's side rear, and then go to the passenger side front and the driver's side front. Breaking. Yep. Breaking. 
Yep. Let's talk about performance. So I've had these calipers on now for probably about four months because I've been slacking on this video, but uh, I actually like these things a lot. Also, um, I did upgrade the rears from a single piston to a dual piston Yukon caliper. And uh, so that has two extra pistons now on the back in total and four extra on the front. So. Performance wise, I have had no issues with the truck at all. It stops fine, it stops great. Um, you can stop it quick. Daily drivability of it's still completely normal, even with the 0 .064 of clearance. But now that I have six additional pistons and I still have the same brake fluid reservoir and master cylinder, it has to push way more fluid now, like way more fluid. So. I didn't notice at all on the daily driving aspect of it, you know, stop and go traffic, nothing like that. But when I slam on the brakes, that is when I noticed a difference too. And I know having a big cam motor doesn't help a lot with the brakes. But uh, before, when I just had the regular setup and the Yukon brakes in the rear, it would lock them up. It would chirp, 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 chirp until I came to a complete stop. And now it can still kind of do that. But I definitely noticed that I have to apply way more pressure than I did before. So that is kind of one thing to know. You know, if I still have the single pistons in the rear, it might still be kind of normal. I wanted to do some like zero to or 60 to zero feet braking, but uh, as you can see, it's actually really cold out. It was sleeting a day ago, and the roads still kind of have some salt on them. So you know, getting the tape measure out and actually measuring and all that stuff like I really wanted to do, get some actual facts on there, uh, probably isn't gonna happen. But I am gonna give you guys a couple quick slams on the brakes just to give you an idea, um, maybe a little bit to show you kind of how it handles. All right, so I'm going 50 miles an hour right now and we're just gonna slam on the brakes. So right there, it didn't even, it didn't even chirp them at all. You know, it still stopped pretty quick, that's for sure. Um, didn't really have much issues, but it just didn't really lock them up. You, know, you don't really want them to lock up, but it kind of feels good when you do lock them up. <laughs> um, I'll do it one more time. Yeah, see there, still it didn't lock them up. There were my two test hits. So basically to summarize this whole thing up, Modification is sweet, easy to do, looks great, performs great, daily driving is great, um, haven't had any issues with normal braking, but when it comes to where it really counts and you're slamming on the brakes, that part is definitely, I mean, a little subpar. That might also be because I have extra pistons in the rear, but um, that's something to take into consideration if you're wanting to do this modification. It might be time for a Hydro Boost conversion. That is where you get brake fluid pressure from the power steering pumps. A lot of guys that do the modifications say that they can stop on a dime and it's totally worth it, especially if you have a cam truck because having a large cam is gonna get you low vacuum pressure, which is gonna get you low braking pressure. So I really wasn't wanting to do it, but uh, I might now have another video to do on Hydro Boost conversion. So it's always something. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If this helped you out or you need the part numbers and stuff in the comments, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, show a little support. I would really appreciate it. So thank you for stopping by. I hope you guys have a great day. Good luck on your swap if you plan to do this modifications. Hopefully it clears your wheels. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in next week's video.